He didn't say, I beseech you by comparing yourself with other people and how they live, how they think, and what they do, and how they feel about things. But I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies. Bodies? This flesh and blood that we have to live in? This thing that we argue about sometimes, should I do this or should I do that? Should I, should I cut this? Should I cut, not cut this or that? Thank God I got it cut this, so I can talk free tonight. No ponytails on me tonight. Never have been, but I was looking at the video from last service, and I almost had one whether I wanted it or not. But when I turned around, my hair was just sticking out that way. I said, I got to get to the barber shop. Lady Barbara, she said, so are you going to work or coming from work? And I said, I'm just getting out of the basement for a few minutes. <laughs> I, said, I, I said, I live like a gopher. And I said, I just had to get up and go for this haircut. <laughs> yeah, need more fresh air. I was asking a waitress some time ago if she believed in a hereafter. And she said, Pardon me? I said, do you believe in a hereafter? She said, pardon me? Do you believe in a hereafter? She said, I don't know. I said, well, I'm here after some food. Would you please take my order? uh, She laughed about as much as you did. (laughs) I beseech you, therefore, Why? Because there's mercy in God. The hardest thing to present holy and acceptable is you, your body. I mean, if we could just let let it all be in the heart, let it all be in the mind. Let it all be uh, just something we work out in our thought process. And just in the spirit, let it just be a spiritual matter and not worry about how we dress, what we do, and, I, and it's, this isn't about dress. It's about whatever you want to think about. You know, there was a time when some of our young people, our uh, energetic young people like Brother Mike and different ones here in the church, uh, back when they were energetic and young, uh, they wanted to take some time to, you know, kind of like climb cl- up on cliffs and do daredevil things and, and here I was thinking about, man, I'd like to see these guys mature in the Lord and become, you know, become something for God. And so, you know, not that I didn't do those kinds of things, too, when I was young and energetic. But, yeah, uh, I, I just thought about, you know, I kept thinking about how there's a future for these young men if they just won't, won't kill themselves or cripple themselves up. And I, and I was concerned that they might hurt themselves. And so I admonished them, and I actually was trying to beseech them. I was calling out to them, please take care of yourself, because God wants to use your body. He doesn't want you to tear it all up and mess it all up. And This is kind of what Paul is saying here. I beseech you, therefore, because God is God. He's a merciful God. He's a graceful God, and everything that we can ever do or say or be a part of it. It's only because him, of him, through him, it all goes to him. So whatever we're going to do tonight and whatever we're doing, it's to give God glory. And if God can take a frail human body and have that body worship him, bodies that get tired, bodies that get frustrated, Bodies that get uneasy about things in life. I'm talking about the body. I'm talking about all of it. The brain, the thoughts that you have in that brain of yours, the tired muscles, the aching back, amen, the bad feelings uh, that you have sometimes, the, the thoughts that maybe are a little scary, the imaginations that all happens that maybe you respond to with your body, everything you can think of, your human body, 
anything you can think of. God wants that to be holy and acceptable to God. You know, in a blanket rule for everybody how to do that, the only one that can work would be through the mercies of God. I can't write a rule book saying this is the way you've got to do it, every one of you from now on. If I, if I would try to write what I think each human being should do to make yourself acceptable to God, you probably wouldn't be able to do it in the first place. We probably wouldn't ever be able to live up to the laws that we could make for one another. Uh, just imagine if you sat down at a table with a tablet and you start writing how you think somebody else should live. And uh, think of the worst possible case you can think of. I can think of several right now. Just while I'm saying that, I can think. I have faces coming before me, you know, uh, people that show no signs of understanding anything about God. <laughs> so if I could sit down and write all the rules of what they need to do to change so they could be acceptable not only by, by God but also by me. <laughs> I could write a lot of things maybe that make it kind of tough on them because sometimes they make it tough on me simply because they're seemingly... Just not with it. They don't hear. They don't understand. They don't comprehend. Uh, you tell them something, they hear something else. You give them the Word of God, and they hear something else. They don't respond to the Word of God. They only respond to natural things, carnal things. They'll talk all day about government, politics, or anything, but you start talking about the Word of God, they want to change the subject and go here, go there. Because they cannot hear the things of God, and I just want to, I just want to get through to them somehow. And boy, if I could write a book, a guidebook for them to go by, I could really write a book. Thus saith Wren Rutledge: Thou shalt not do this, and thou shalt not do that. Only I would just leave off the doubt. I'd just say, from now on, don't do this, don't do that. And be sure and do this, and be sure and do that, and on and on. And, and you can fill in the blanks of the do's and that's because I'm not going to get into all that. <laughs> there are some people today, many people, trying to make the rules for everybody to live by to make you holy. And you know what? Everybody that tries to live by those rules, break the rules. And then they get this condemnation from other people. And sometimes the little old tongues start gossiping and people start murmuring and uh, they get with their friends and say, have you heard the latest? Do you know what sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so, they went against everything our pastor teaches. They went against everything that we stood for all these years. Did you see what I saw? Did you hear what I heard? And basically what rules and red legislation and enforcement of standards, which I believe in standards, everything needs a standard. Food needs some kind of standard. Gasoline needs some kind of standard. Everything you deal with has to have some kind of measures and standards. And So, so why not, in the work of God, have a, an assembly and say, well, we have certain standards here. That, that we feel like God would be pleased with. But don't ever trust in your standards. Because standards and rules have a tendency to cause people to become judgmental. 